Hello, kings of the earth. Welcome to the Gathering of the Kings broadcast. My name is Pastor Mike of Kingdom Ministries. I thank God for this gathering and for your presence today. I pray that God bless you, take care of you. May the Lord be kind and gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace, a peace that surpasses our understanding, a peace that surpasses our understanding. Before I begin in my broadcast today, I just want to take this couple of minutes just to play this song that's been meditating my heart all day. I just have to play it. For you that for you for those of you who know have many plans and ideas of how to proceed in your assignment with God, I play the song to you. Proverbs chapter 19, verses 21 says, Many are the plans in a man's heart. But it is the Lord's purpose that will prevail. And when I let when I had let God's purpose in my life prevail, everything went so much clear. It was so much clear to me what my assignment is and when I have to start it. So I just played the song for you. Um, I hope to give, give you clarity. But it's a song that's been meditating in my heart all day long, and I just have to play it. Just listen. Sometimes I don't understand What do you let me fall When the world is in your hand You can stop it all if you wanted to Stop it if you wanted to But you don't just let me go through Don't do it Yours is best for you, my friend. So I can't get distracted by what I see. So forget about the problems there is. Because they already worked it out in the end. So I tell you to trust him. Right where you are. Right where you are. All for a purpose. Whatever you're going through, it's for a purpose. It's intentional. And it will be worth it. Keep believing. purpose. Whatever you're going through today, my friend, it's all for a purpose. And it's only to make you stronger. The 
one thing I found out, everything I've been through, it was temporary. Cry out, act out, question God, do whatever you have to do. But just keep on believing. You have to know that it is in his plan. It is in his plan. Like I said before, many of the plans in a man's heart. But it is God's purpose that will prevail. And that you, whatever you're going through, my friends, today, let me tell you, just keep believing. It will get better. Okay? Whatever problem you're going through is temporary. It shall not last. It shall not last. It can. And, and you know, <laughs> if, you, if you have lived any significant um, years on this earth, you know, whatever you're going through, it shall pass. So, and just know whatever you're going through is all in his, it's all in his plan. Not to break you down, not to kill you, because it won't do that. But it's all to make you stronger, to equip you with the power of the Lord. So I, I just encourage you today, my friends, just know that it's all in his hands. And you can go to um, um, Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21. Um, that song is by P.J. Morton. Leandra, um, Leandra from the Gospel Show with Kirk Franklin, and it's called All in His Plan. All in His Plan. It's a wonderful song, and it's been meditated in my spirit all day, so I had to play it. I had to play it. Well, I thank you very much for, again, for your, for your, for your presence and listening to me today. Our mandate at Kingdom Ministries is to teach kingdom principles. We only teach kingdom principles and laws to help you live in God's kingdom and complete confidence. The Constitution, which I refer to as the Bible, um, says that there are great rewards in the obedience to, of the laws of our King. Um, and in our ministry, this ministry, we refer to this Bible um, as the Constitution. It's called the Constitution of Kingdoms. And the Kingdom the Legal Documents is called the Constitution because it's a legal document. Just like the legal document we have here in the United States of America called the Constitution of the United States. That's a legal document. Um, and the Constitution, also known as the Bible, it contains all the laws of, of, from God for living here on this earth. It's our blueprint for life. Our blueprint for life. Well, today, I'm going to begin a series of teachings about the culture of the kingdom. And what God intended for man. Notice, my friends, God created every human being for the express purpose of revealing his nature on earth. Revealing his nature. His all-knowing all nature. His all-powerful nature. His omnipresent nature. But well, God created you and I so that you and I will express his nature on earth. Um, before I go deep into the culture of the kingdom, I want to start off by just giving you a few, a few key components, three, that I'm going to talk about today. There's about ten of them all together, but today I'm only going to give you three. But there's three key components of a kingdom, and I'm also going to define what a kingdom is. And that's going to be it for today. I'll be very brief, but I, I just pay attention to what I'm going to say, but it's very critical that you understand what is said to you when you go to church. Many of y'all get caught up in the word kingdom. It's a beautiful word, but it has such a powerful meaning. Um, three, of the key, three of the key components of a kingdom is you have a king, you have a territory, and you have citizens. In reference to the kingdom of God, you have a king. That's Jesus Christ. And in Revelation, he's called the king of kings. The territory that I'm referring to is earth. Okay, which God created. And last, citizens. Sons, God's sons and daughters. That's you and I. As, 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 as individuals who accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. 
We are citizens in the kingdom of God. So again, when you when you when when you, when you hear your pastor talk about a kingdom, when he says kingdom of God or kingdom, he's referring. You have to always refer to the kingdom, or the king, territory, this earth, and citizens. You and I. Those are three key components that you must always always bring to mind when you hear your pastor or anybody preach the word and say kingdom. Um, it's very important that you understand that. Um, um, like I said before, when your pastor casually speaks about the kingdom of God, he or she is preaching about a very powerful concept, concept that they get very little detail about. But my goal at this ministry is to get you to think about king, Jesus Christ, and yourself as God does. That's how God look. He looks as, as, as citizens in the kingdom of God, not as Christians. I know many of you grew up on that, but again, this ministry here is to get you to rethink, to reevaluate, to think about kingdom as it properly should be thought about. Um, many of you hear the word and you just make many, many assumptions, but a kingdom, again, you're going to have a king, territory, and citizens. Um, kingdom is defined as God's governing, governing influence and sovereign rulership over earth, impacting earth with his will, his intent, and his purposes, producing a culture of people who will reflect his values, morals, and standards of life. That's what kingdom is. Again, kingdom is God's governing influence and sovereign rulership over earth. Impacting this earth with his will, his intent, his purposes, and producing the culture of people who will reflect the king's values, morals, and standards of life. You and I are supposed to be a reflection of God, a reflection of God. Now, three points I want to emphasize about this definition. Three points, three very important points I want to really, really, really emphasize to you today. Um, about the kingdom of God. Number one, God's sovereign rule. I talked about kingdom is God's sovereign rule. The sovereignty of God is that God does as he pleases and he answers to no one. He does as he pleases and he answers to no one. One of the distinct differences between the kingdom and this government we live here is that the president of the United States, our president Biden, he answers to the people he governs. Supposedly, he answers to the people, the president of this country, or maybe of your country, they answer to the people, supposedly. But in the kingdom, God answers to no one, nor is he interested in our opinions about what is to be done and how to live. He's interested only in how his will, his intent, his purposes will influence the earth. Number two. God's impacting the earth with his will, intent, and purposes. Again, God desires for his will to be executed and impact this earth for his glory. And last, kingdom, kingdom, the kingdom mindset, kingdom lifestyle will produce a community of people who will reflect the morals, values, and standards of the life of the king to live according to his purposes, not ours. Romans chapter 11, verse 5 says, So to then, at the present time, there has come to be a remnant, a remnant, a small believing minority according to God's gracious choice. And I believe right now, today, my friends, that there is only a remnant here on earth right now. Many people acknowledge Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. But you got to go many steps further. Okay, you have to believe, trust, and obey his word. Okay, and it's only a small believing minority that does that, that does that. So again, the kingdom will produce a community of people who will reflect the king's, the clean, the king's standards of life. Again, kingdom is God's sovereign, sovereign rule and governing influence over earth, impacting the earth with his intent, will, and purposes. Manifesting a group of people who will reflect the king's, God's values, morals, and standards for life. 
At the end of the day, my friends, you and I are supposed to be a reflection of God's nature, like I said earlier. Kingdom is or was the only message Jesus preached or proclaimed during his three-year ministry on this earth. And I will teach you of those scriptures I found that he preached in the future. He only preached about the kingdom of God. He didn't preach that you need to search for him. And I can prove it. If you go to Matthew chapter 4, 17, he says in that scripture, Jesus says in that scripture, repent for the kingdom of God has arrived. That means it's here right now. So you don't have to go searching for it. It's here on this earth right now. Nor do you have to die to experience kingdom. You don't have to die, go to heaven to experience kingdom. You, you, if, when you enter the kingdom of God, you, you can experience kingdom. You can experience heavenly things here on this earth because he says it's here. So you don't have to go searching. You don't have to go searching. Again, Jesus Christ didn't, didn't preach about religion. He didn't preach about he, he didn't he didn't preach about the blood. He didn't he didn't preach about the blood that he would have to shed on the cross. Because the blood was a sacrificial a sacrificial cleansing that he absorbed for the sin of man. If Jesus did not absorb that sin for us, there will be a tremendous price you and I will have to pay for our sin. He did not preach about that in the Old Testament, in the New Testament. He did not preach. Um, Jesus also did not preach about salvation. He didn't preach about how you get into how you get into the kingdom of heaven. Because again, salvation was how you get how you get into the kingdom of heaven. The message that he preached had nothing to do with any of the topics, nor of any of the messages you hear in church today. Many pastors they focus on the blood. The blood, the blood, and the blood is cool. It has its purpose. And it has performed its purpose. Okay? And let me... Now, I'm not going to say that. But I can, I can reference what Jesus Christ brought to earth. If you'll go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6, it says, For to us a child shall be born, to us a child shall be given, a son shall be given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. Let me read that again. Because this is telling you exactly what Jesus Christ brought to earth. And again, I already told you in Matthew chapter 4, 17. He says, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand or here or has arrived. He's telling us that it's here already. And number one, number one, he's telling us it's here. But in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, he's telling He's telling you and I what he brought. For to us a child shall be born, to us a son shall be given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. That's what he brought from the earth. You can read the rest of that scripture, but it says it very clearly. It doesn't, you don't have to have, be a PhD or be intellectual to read that as it is. Some things in the Bible, you have, to, it, it is what it is. And there's some other things in the Bible, that revelation. God gives revelation via the Holy Spirit. Again, that scripture clearly states what Jesus Christ brought, brought to earth, a government. And this government that he's referring to is called the kingdom of God, a government of his sovereign rule, impacting this earth with his will, producing a, cult, a culture of people that will reflect his nature, that will reflect his nature. Well, that's all I have for today. But if you take nothing else from what I've what I taken you, understand that when your pastor talks about kingdom, he's talking about what? He's talking about a kingdom. What else he's talking about? He's talking about territory, earth. And last, he's talking about citizens, you and I, his sons and daughters. Okay? Remember that. If you, if you take nothing else from what I've said, remember that. That's what he's talking about. But he don't talk about kingdom. He's not just talking about love, joy, peace and righteousness, but he's talking about a king. He's talking about territory and he's talking about citizens. There's about eight more components that, that consist of a kingdom, but those three I think are vital for you to understand 
in this broadcast. That's the first thing I want to teach you. King, territory, citizens. And you and I are part of the, part of the kingdom of God. Again, like I said, that's all the time I have for today. If you care, if you care to hear more about this exciting message of the kingdom, then tune in each week at this time. I will talk more about the kingdom of God in part two next week of the series and about who is responsible to administrate the kingdom of God here on earth. Who is responsible for the administration of the kingdom on earth? If you have any questions you have about this message of the kingdom, if you have any comments you want to you want to send me, if you have any prayers you're in need of, or any testimonies you want to share with this ministry, please email me at Pastor Mike at Kingdom Ministries Media at gmail.com. Again, if you have any testimonies, comments, questions, or prayers you're in need of, email me at Pastor Mike Kingdom Ministries Media at gmail.com. It should be shown on the screen. Email me. And let, let me share in your testimony of how God's lifted you up through a, a very challenging time for you. Um, and if you need prayers, let me be in agreement with you. Um, the Constitution says when two or more are, 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 are in prayer or communicating about the Bible, that Jesus Christ shall be in the midst of it. So share your share 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 your prayers. Let me pray for you, and let me be in the, so we can celebrate together. If it's on your heart to support our ministry, your work in the community that I live in here in North Carolina, please send your donation to Cash App. The code is dollar sign one four K I N. And remember, when you sow generously, you'll reap generously. A principle that I live for. I lived by for the past 10 years of my life. And believe me, my friends, it works. That It's a principle. Again, like I told you before, I live by principles. Okay? So, but before I, before I conclude, I, I can't get off this, this broadcast without giving you an opportunity and inviting you into the kingdom of God. All I ask you to do is to believe and receive the truth of his word. And that word shall pass in your spirit. It shall come to pass that that word, that invitation that you accept will come to pass in your spirit. Just lift up this prayer with me right now, my friends. Pray quietly and to yourself or out loud, however you want to do it. Lord God, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that God delivered you and allowed you to rise, raise, rise from the dead. I believe in my heart, Lord God. And I thank you for forgiving me of all my sins today. Thank you for this invitation. And I accept the invitation today. That I am now a, a, a king and a child of an almighty God. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer with me, my friends, welcome to the family of kings. Welcome to the family of kings. And let me tell you something. The Constitution says... When one person accepts Christ as their Lord Savior, heaven is celebrating. Let heaven celebrate today. Let heaven celebrate you today, my friends. Let heaven celebrate you. Let heaven celebrate you. Live in purpose, my friends, all purpose. Do it intentionally. Don't give up. And remember, God loves you. Kingdom ministry loves you. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you love yourself. God bless y'all. God bless you. God bless you.